Hey YouTube, this is Jay Sones. In this video, I'm going to summarize how to get started playing UO Outlands. I'll be breaking down each of these topics into separate videos so we can cover in more detail, but this one's going to be a quick and easy guide for someone just getting started. That means it's time for me to ask you all, are you ready to log in? <laughs> yes? All right, let's go! In Ultima Online, you get to choose your own adventure. You can become a mage, warrior, animal tamer, blacksmith, lumberjack, fisherman, and more. You mold your character by using the 50 available skills, starting from zero, zero all the way to grandmaster, which is 100. Even though there are so many skills to choose from, your character caps out at 700 total points. In the old days of UO, we called someone that had seven grandmaster skills a 7x GM. Leet, dude. Based on what skills you use, will also increase certain statistics or stats. You'll gain strength, intelligence, or dexterity up to 100 with a max of 225 stat points. Strength is your carry capacity and overall hit points. Int is your mana. Dex is your swing speed and stamina. If you played the original UO, a majority of the game was just getting your skills up to GM in the desired template you wanted to play, and from there you would choose to grow your pixel empire by acquiring gold, land, new unique items, and also participate in player and player combat, PvP. On UO Outlands, in addition to grandmastering your skills, they also introduce multiple items that can help your character become stronger. These items like acid Aspect, Codex, and Mastery Chains are important to help you succeed in player versus monster combat, EVM. We can cover those in more detail in separate videos, but just know that getting your skills to GM is just the beginning here on Outlands. All right, cool, Jace. How do I actually get started? You want to grab the installer and patcher from the UO Outlands website, click that big play now button and follow the steps to get loaded. If you have questions about the patcher and the installer, I'll be posting an installing the game episode that covers all that in more detail. Now that the game's installed, when you click play now, this will actually load two things, the UO Classic Client and Razor. Razor is an assistant program to help you customize the game a bit more with overhead messages, helpful macros and scripts, automated agents to help you organize, buy, and sell gear. I cover Razor in a bunch of my other videos. What you choose as your username and password will automatically create your account. So make sure you remember what you use, creating your first character. On UO Outlands, you get to have three accounts per household with five characters on each account. So try not to worry too much about having the perfect character on day one of playing. Just get into the game and start having fun. When I first started playing, I knew I wanted to be an archer, so I selected the ranger template. If you're brand new to the game, I suggest you do the same by selecting a template that sounds appealing to you. I'll choose Ranger again for this quick guide. When creating a character, the skills or template you choose affect your starting gear you receive. If you're a returning veteran, feel free to hit the custom button and choose your own skills. I've included a chart here of what items each skill or template grants you. Feel free to pause the video and review. User Interface I'm not sure why the default options for the old classic client look like this, but let's spend a few moments setting up our user interface. I will cover these options in a separate video in more detail, but here's the quick top 10 must-haves. Resize your game window using the blue box. Open the world map. Open up your options using all O and turn on the following. Under general, you want to turn on grid loot both, enable circle of transparency, and close health bar gump when dead. On the speech tab, check mark active chat when pressing enter. Combat spells, uncheck hold tab key for combat. On the counters tab, enable counters and just make a quick two by eight grid with the cell size of your liking. I use 45. Info bar, I like to enable that, remove my name and then add gold with a color yellow. Under interface, we're gonna set our container scale to at least 150. Here's some additional quality of life updates that you can make as well. Feel free to pause the video here or follow along in my upcoming best client settings video. Getting around. When you're on the shelter island, you cannot perform negative or criminal actions, so you're safe here to explore. You also not lose any of your gear when you die while you have young player status. You run around using the mouse, right click to move in the direction of your cursor. To interact with non-player controlled characters, NPCs, you can single click them for a context menu or you can use their name with certain keywords. The big ones you will use is vendor sell, vendor buy, bank, stable, and guards. To interact with things and objects, you double click them. Certain items can perform additional actions. A dagger on a tree gathers single piece of kidling, but if you have an ax equipped, you can chop that tree for lumber and turn the lumber into 50 kindling for just five wood. How we gain experience is using our skills and ability. We can see our skill gain chance by single clicking our character and saying show skill gain chance. Some of these skills we want to start training right away will be tracking and camping. Both of these will increase our damage. Camping will allow us to get around the world without majory 
and tracking lets us see what monsters or players are in the area. You'll end up using tracking to either avoid player killers or become one. Let's activate tracking by opening your skills tab, clicking the blue button next to tracking. Active skills can be pulled out of the skill scroll so it's easier to click. Once the tracking menu's up, click left about four clicks until you see begin hunting red players. Click the button below to activate the skill. You'll also want to change the hunting mode to say always get closest while training. We'll see our tracking skill gain chance at the bottom left of the screen. Fighting. All right, let's head inside the shelter dungeon and fight our first enemy. To attack something, you'll need to be in war mode and press tab and then double click on the thing you want to attack. This will start auto attacking based on whatever weapon you have equipped. If an enemy attacks you and you currently have no target, you may also automatically start fighting back. We want to keep an eye on our health and our enemy's health. If we start to get injured, we can use bandages to heal. This will increase our healing skill. When we kill a monster, you can double click the corpse to open up the loot box. Drag and drop items from their corpse to your backpack. If you have grid loot enabled, you can easily single click the item. Death. No. Oh. You will die a lot. And when you die, the items you found in the world will stay on your body and you turn into a ghost. No one can see or hear you and you can't see them you're gonna need to find a healer. There are healers, caravans, and wandering healers all around the world, so just keep an eye out for them as you explore. Once you resurrect, you need to head back to your body and gather your things. On Shelter Island, you are safe, but in the outside world, other players will be able to loot your items, so be very careful. Make sure to bank any important items, like gold or additional treasure, so you don't carry around more than you want to lose. Buying, selling, and money. Once we have 25 gold, let's head to the butcher and pick up a skinning knife. Each creature you kill you can skin to gather meat and leather for additional gold. Forensic evaluation skill increases each time you skin, and the higher your skill, the more leather and meat you'll find, increasing your profits. Selling leather to other players will increase your profits even further, but if you're brand new, just selling to the vendor will give you that little bit of extra coin just fine. Once you get familiar with running, attacking, and using your skills, the faster you'll be able to collect that money. Your first big purchase. You want to collect 750 gold for a horse? Let's head back into that dungeon and keep training. Remember to watch your health and supplies. Once you collect that gold, head over to the stable master and say vendor buy. Congratulations, you've made it. Adventure awaits! Huzzah! Once you grasp the game, you should start exploring this beautiful world. I suggest using camping and the world atlas to begin your adventures. You can mark locations on the map by visiting the locations in the book and then making a campfire. As you collect more locations in your book, the faster you're going to be able to move around the world without majory. You want to take advantage of the skill gain bonus and Shelter Island, but once you hit 70 skill, it's going to be time to move on. You're free to leave and enter Shelter Island at any time, but just know, once you leave, your young st player status goes away, and when you die, all items will be left on your corpse. Stop clicking me! Some of these actions can be pretty repetitive, and that's where the in-game macros and Razor come in very handy. All right, let's set up a simple in-game macro for saying bank. From your options tab, you'll go over to macros. What we're gonna wanna do is click new macro and we'll just name it bank. From here at the top, this is how you set the hotkey. So we'll say alt F1 is the hotkey. I held down alt F1 there and then click the checkbox. And then down at the drop down here, we're gonna say say bank and apply. Uh, we can also click a create macro button and that will create a little macro button based on the name of the macro. So now if I run over here to the bank, which is right here, here, this is the bank. Now I can hold Alt F1 and it'll open the bank or I can click the uh, little icon right there. All right, the other way we can make macros and hotkeys is through Razor. So we'll head over to Razor and click the general tab. We're gonna make a new profile. So this is just Jace intro. Now, anything that we set as hotkeys will be saved to this profile. As you make more characters, you can clone and then customize that profile based on the character you're playing. So for the next macro that we're gonna set up, we're gonna set up a last object macro. So for right now, for example, if I want to chop trees, I have to click that. I have to wait, then I have to double click again and wait. So what we can do is we can just set, instead of double clicking, we're gonna make a last object hockey. So if I could type in the filter here, last object, and we'll just set that the Z, say control Z. Now, if I use control Z, it pulls up whatever I opened last. Okay, so in this case, it is the hatchet. Uh, but it could be a dagger as well. Just a quick tip for gathering, smart harvest is enabled here on this server, so instead of having to click the tree, you can just click yourself. What's next? Additionally, there's still way more things to cover, like what items to save, where to fight, what to buy next, etc. I'm going to continue this series and cover all these topics for new players in more videos. Best of luck in your adventures in Outland, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.